So we have all seen columns made, concrete columns. We have all seen the builder put in your rebar, four pieces or six pieces, depending on column. Then we have all seen them put in that ring, that metal ring that goes around the columns. A whole bunch of them go around, they tie them on. They are called stirrups. The question is, do you know what they're for? Do you know why they are there? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm just saying my piece, and this is building your dream house in Jamaica. Thanks for joining me. As usual, we are going to ask you to subscribe to the videos. Uh, just hit the like button and uh, also don't forget to hit the notification bell. So stirrups, what are they? Why are they in your columns? Why do builders use them? Why do architects design your columns with stirrups in them? The first thing we all understand is that you need to have steel or rebar in your column because that makes the column stronger. But Recently, I was watching a video from uh, a different part of the world, which shall remain nameless, so to speak, and I noticed that while they were making these very large two and three story houses, they did have rebar in the columns, but they were not using any stirrups. And that sort of got me to thinking that a lot of people do not even know why the stirrups are in the column. Today, we are going to tell you why the stirrups are in the column and why it is a very bad idea to leave them out. First things first, when a stirrup is in a beam, it is called a stirrup. But when it is in a column, it is technically called a tie. It is exactly the same thing and it is performing the same function. It is just that to differentiate between when it is used in a beam and when it is used in a column, they are called by different names. But they are exactly the same material, they are exactly the same thing, they are made in exactly the same way and they perform exactly the same function. So to to answer the question in a very short form. Stirrups are in your beams and your columns to counter shear forces. It is that simple. Now the question is what is a shear force? Now to answer that question I'll have to explain to you how a beam works, how the rebar and how the reinforcement inside of the beam and the column works. Okay first let us discuss how a beam works. Now when you have a beam it is supported on two ends one on either side by a column. The maximum amount of force, the maximum amount of moments is at the end at which it is supported. When concrete cracks, concrete tends to crack at an angle, at a diagonal angle. This is where the maximum pressure is exerted on the beam, not in the center of the beam, but closer to the ends because that is where the maximum moments are. This is the portion of the beam that needs the most support and this is where the shear forces are concentrated. So stirrups are designed to provide what is called containment. At the ends of the beams where the forces are concentrated, that is where you also want to concentrate your maximum amount of support. So this is where you are going to put most of your stirrups. Now, since your concrete is going to crack at a diagonal angle, the shear forces are going to split that concrete at a diagonal angle. What you want is to have as much support in that diagonal split as possible. And and that will ensure that if and when the beam fails, it will fail gradually. You do not want it to simply shear right off at the moment and simply flop right down. What you want is for it to give you some indication that it is about to fail and then you also want that beam to fail gradually. Now, the reason you want the beam to fail gradually is to give people, because it is going to be a building and it is going to have people, and so you want the beam to fail gradually so people can get a warning that the structure is about to fail and take measures to mitigate that issue whether or not it be evacuation or to fix the issue as they see fit. So here we have a diagram of how a concrete beam normally fails and you see that diagonal angle. Now if you put your stirrups in that area your stirrup will form what is called a containment cage and the closer the stirrups are together is the stronger the containment cage will be. As you progress further 
further and further from the moment, then the containment cage becomes less and less necessary. You are also progressing further and further away from the point of failure, and therefore you will need less stirrups in that basic area, as you can see from this diagram right here. Now, as you can imagine, a column is simply a beam that has been rotated 90 degrees. Now it's standing on the end. Now, we all know that concrete is extremely strong in compression, but it will fail in compression eventually. So now, as you can imagine, the lower end of a concrete column is under a lot more stress than the upper end of a concrete column. And of such, you are going to concentrate your stirrups more toward the lower end of the concrete column. This is, of course, for your containment purposes. However, ties, as they are known when they are used in a concrete column, are also there for seismic mitigation. And by this we mean when a column experiences a seismic moment, the ground and or the foundation may twist and or turn to one side or the other. And this is called a shear force, a twisting or a torquing force, also known as a shear force. Now, in this case, your concrete will also tend to crack or to fail at a diagonal angle. The stirrups are there or the ties are there to counteract this shear force and to mitigate this amount of cracking. In other words, in an earthquake situation, the stirrups will prevent or slow the rate of failure in your concrete column. So that is the reason you have your ties inside of your concrete column. So as you can see from this illustration here and just a little bit of information that I've given you, it is really a very, very bad idea to try to leave all the ties or the stirrups from your columns or your beams because doing so compromises your structure and leaves you at risk of catastrophic failure of your concrete columns and indeed of your entire building. So guys, I hope this was very helpful. If there are any questions you have, do not hesitate to ask. Any comments you have, anything you'd like to see me do, any other topics you'd like to hear me talk about, do not hesitate to put them in the comments below so go ahead and discuss tell me what you like what you didn't like if this was helpful and uh, as usual guys we're going to ask you again to like and subscribe to the videos and as usual you all have a great day